All right, so in this video, I'm going to take a look at the June 2010 um, ISA paper P. And we're going to look at the second section of the exam, the part that you didn't need to have done the practical to go through. So the scenario we've got, uh, we've got a meter ruler suspended horizontally from a second meter ruler, which is clamped. And the bottom ruler is displaced. Um, and then it's going to oscillate in symbolic motion. So it's a kind of like a pendulum, but a slightly different and they investigate the relationship between the time period and the distance between the strings. And what they've got is we've collected data and there are some blanks in there we're going to be filling in later. So you can see what they've done is they've changed the distance. Uh, looks like they've measured the distance with a meter ruler because they've given it to the nearest millimeter. They've timed 20 oscillations three times. Uh, calculated the mean 20 oscillation time and then found the mean time period. And then they've probably got logs because they're going to try to find the power relationship or what you know what power d is raised in the equation. Okay, so um, inspection of the table shows an anomalous result in the timings for d equals 0 0.600. State the most likely reason for the occurrence of this result. Um, so if you look back at the table um, and I've put a copy of this exam paper in the description if you want to download a copy to make it easier um, but what you'll notice is the time the second time period the repeat two is about one time period below the other times uh, so that's not going to be a timing error that's going to be the student has timed only 19 oscillations rather than 20 that would be the best explanation as to why there's exactly or roughly one time period difference so the student decides to ignore all the data from d equals 0 0.600 meters and then not include on the graph. What would have been a better strategy? Well, they've got two good pieces of data for that length. So there's no reason to then completely discard it all. All you would need to do is redo that measurement and make sure it's 20 oscillations and then calculate an average time period from that point. Um, so use data in the table and calculate a more realistic value for the mean time period. So in terms of calculating it, I can't go and repeat measurements. So I'm just going to use the two measurements that we think have gone correctly. Uh, find the average of those two divided by 20 gives us the time period um, or the average time period. OK, so complete the table by entering values for the mean time period, log T and log D for where we have the blanks. Uh, so if we go to a copy of the table, uh, I'm just going to do this on my calculator as we go through. Uh, so first of all, we need to find the average time for 20 oscillations. OK, fine. Divide that by 20. Uh, we get, I reckon you get 2.69 blah, blah, blah. That rounds to 2.70, uh, making sure we are being consistent so that all of these have been given to three significant figures so we should do the same and then taking the log of that again we'd give it to three significant figures and likewise log of the d we're going to give to three significant figures because d is given to three significant figures um, we can go through that process again for the next one so uh, gives us a time period of 4.04 uh, log t slightly bigger 0 0.606 when we round it and then log d uh, 0.699 when we round it um, just a little thing to make sure you're using log to the base 10 um, some people get this wrong by using the wrong logarithm so just be a bit careful um, but that's our data so next what we're going to do is complete the graph by plotting those points and determine the gradient so let's go to the graph. Uh, so we've just calculated values of log t and log d. Uh, so the first one should be around here. The next one should be around here. And general guidance for these exam questions is you usually have to be within a millimeter of the collect location. So you do have to be pretty precise when you're doing this plotting. And let's stick a line of best fit in. And what I'm looking for is that there's roughly equal number of points above and below the line. So We've got three above, we've got two below, and then two on it, so that looks fine to me. Uh, we want to calculate the gradient of a very large section of the graph, like you can see with the dashed lines. Find the change in log t, change in log d, um, and uh, those would be the values I'm getting. Sort of, I'm what so you can see what I'm doing there is I'm trying to make um, a judgment between squares where. It, where it is between them. So um, for my second x value, I rec 
or d log d value i reckon i can interpolate slightly and then gradient would just be the those two divided by each other gives us basically minus one but it's just underneath okay so theory shows that t and d are related by the equation t equals k over d where k is a constant discuss whether the graph supports this theory so we've got a log t versus log d graph so um, the theory says that this graph should have a gradient of minus one so the gradient from a log versus log graph tells us the power of d in the equation so our graph tells us the power of d is minus 0.998 whereas uh, theory tells us the power of d is minus one so i would be pretty damn confident that our graph supports the theory we got incredibly close to the correct value according to the theory there okay so uh, still using the formula t equals k over d calculate a value for the k for shortest time period t and the corresponding distance d giving it an appropriate unit so again looking back at the table um, the values are 1.01 and 0.800 uh, k is going to be t times d giving us uh, and we've done a length times time so it's 0.808 meters seconds so that's not milliseconds that's meters seconds so uh, for the result corresponding to the shortest time period determine the percentage uncertainty in the value of time period d so what we're actually going to find is the percentage uncertainty in the time for 20 oscillations because that's actually what we measured so First of all, the uncertainty is the uh, biggest repeat reading minus the smallest repeat reading, giving us an uncertainty of 0.18 seconds in the time for 20 oscillations. Um, the value would be the average time for 20 oscillations. So that's what I've calculated and it comes out 20.20, uh, 20 giving us a percentage of uncertainty of 0.89%. Assuming distance D was measured with a meter ruler to the nearest millimeter, determine the percentage uncertainty in the value of D. Um, so one measurement with a meter ruler has an uncertainty of half a millimeter, but to measure a length, we need two measurements. So the uncertainty is going to be one millimeter when we double it. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. One millimeter divided by the value gives us 0.13%. Uh, Okay, so what we're going to do next is calculate the percentage uncertainty in value of k and then get the uncertainty in k. Uh, so first of all, uh, k is t times d. So we're going to add the two percentage uncertainties in d and t together. And I've taken the unrounded values and add them together. The value of k was 0 0.808. We calculated that earlier. So 1% of 0 0.808 is essentially it's going to be plus or minus 0 0.00821 meters seconds but with uncertainties we usually are just giving that to the kind of the nearest 10 above that so we're going to we would quote that as 0 0.01 meters seconds and so a student investigates the feasibility of using an electronic timing vice instead to time the oscillations a small pin is attached to the oscillating system that passes through a light gate at the center of the oscillation the device is set up so when the pin first passes through, it starts the timer, and when the pin passes through again, the timer stops. In trial timing, the it records a value of 0.51 seconds. What is the time period? Well, it's measured. If it's gone from center up and back to the center, that's half the time period. So the full time period would be 1.02. Um, compare the accuracy of this method with the hand-operated stop clock method used in question two if the timer has a precision of 0 0.01 seconds. Uh, so the timer is a digital instrument, so its uncertainty is equal to the precision if we've only got one reading. Uh, the measurement was 0 0.51, therefore its percentage uncertainty is 2%. If we look back for question two, we had a percentage uncertainty in the timing of 0.8%, or maybe it was 0.9% actually. But either way, it's much less. So the manual stopwatch in this instance is more accurate it has a lower percentage uncertainty and you need those calculations to back up that statement and finally state and explain one improvement you could make to the electronic method to increase the accuracy of the time period um, essentially we're going to try and make the time longer so current the current light gate startup times half an oscillation 
if we could somehow set it up to time multiple time periods like we did with the stopwatch, we'd have a much bigger time period measurement and therefore its percentage uncertainty would be smaller even though the precision is the same and that's going to improve the accuracy and that rounds off this section of the practical exam.